Welcome back to Our Issues Milwaukee. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. If you're just tuning in, we've been talking about holiday festivities and how you and your family can celebrate together. My next guest is Brian King. He serves as the CEO of the Betty Brin Children's Museum. How are you, Brian? Andrea, I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being here and happy holidays. Happy holidays to you too. Thank you so much. And needless to say, you are no stranger to this show. So when you think of kids having fun and actually learning at the same time, Betty Brin Children's Museum definitely comes to mind. So uh, kids are going to be, or they actually are on break as we speak. So why don't you tell us about some of the things that you've put in place to uh, have something fun for the kids to do while they're on break? Yeah, I'd be happy to. And, and, and just to start, we are so excited to be open at this time of year as compared to last year. So that in and of itself is such a, a big change and an important change to give kids and families a place where uh, they can get out of the house, <clears throat> particularly if the weather's not great, and come have a, you know, a, a wondrous experience. And so when you come to Betty Brin uh, over the holidays right now, um, you've got our, our full exhibit floor experience waiting for you. You have our hometown uh, where kids can, um, can role play, they can shop at the Sendix grocery, they can deliver the mail and all those mm -hmm. kinds of fun things. Um, we still have our I'm an Explorer exhibit um, mm -hmm. on the floor for a limited period of time. And that has various experiences where kids can play uh, underwater and in space on safari, um, <clears throat> lots of um, great interactives that uh, allow kids to just sort of explore, free explore, figure out what's around them. Um, and we also have all sorts of, um, um, you know, facilitated activities in our maker space during this time where kids could be making um, um, snowflakes to uh, decorate the museum or to take home. Um, and, uh, you know, just anything and everything, um, you, you can find super fun experiences here. Absolutely. And we'll talk a little bit more about those special exhibits. But uh, when you talk about extending the hours, what exactly will be the hours that you've put in place for the holiday season? Absolutely. So we um, <clears throat> are going to be open the Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday after Christmas. Um, currently, we're not open on Mondays, Tuesdays, or Wednesdays, but that mm -hmm. is a big week, and we know that um, that that, or we expect there will be demand, and so we'll be open those days for our two play sessions, 9.30 to 12.30, and then again uh, from 1.30 to 4.30. Um, <clears throat> and we will also be open on New Year's, um, New Year's Eve, uh, until 12 uh, 30 and there's more to talk about there with a fun fun event that we do um, <clears throat> on New Year's Eve. Yeah, let's talk about that fun event that happens on New Year's Eve. Uh, I've said that uh, really it's a blessing to be able to celebrate the new year with the young and the young at heart all together because a lot of times New Year's Eve is set aside for the adults, you know, and the kids go to bed early and uh, yeah, the next day they wake up and it's a new year. But you found a way to really give young children a chance to know what it means to celebrate bringing in a new year and you pull out all the stops. So let's talk about New Year's at noon happening at the Betty Brin Children's Museum. Yeah, we we um, we play with the clock for New Year's. We we just uh, advance the clock maybe 12 hours and we make believe <laughs> it's midnight when it's actually noon. Um, and what we do is we gather everybody either up in our um, museum floor looking down into the atrium area. If you've been to the museum, you know the, the center is open there. And on that ground floor is an atrium. And then all the way up in the ceiling, we have um, the ability using pulleys to, to literally drop um, something. And in the past, it's been a ball. It's going to look a little different this time. Uh, this year around, but we 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 do our own big um, ball drop uh, with a kind of pre-party that lasts for you know 45 30 45 minutes. Um, <clears throat> this year, our rapper in residence West Tank will be emceeing uh, the event where um, <clears throat> there'll be there'll be song, there'll be some dancing, and then there will obviously be the big countdown 
as we get to the last you know 10 seconds before noon at which point <clears throat> the ball drops and we all say happy new year and we make <laughs> believe that it's midnight but you know what the kids don't have to stay up late and for some parents just as importantly they don't have to stay up late that's the truth you, they've already gone through all of the motions <laughs> I love the whole concept, though. It really is fun. And you have kids there as young as what? Oh, they come in, um, um, in, in you know, little baby carriers and <laughs> you know, all the way up to, to some older kids, um, for sure. I, I mean, the museum is really designed for kids who are at least a year, um, yeah. you know, 18 months and then, you know, up to eight, nine, 10. Um, and we have experiences for that full range <clears throat> of kids. For sure, there's a whole area of the museum called Pocket Park, which uh -huh. is specifically designed for our youngest visitors, and it has a little gate, so they're less of a flight risk for parents. Um, and <laughs> it, it's just a it's a sweet spot just for for the littlest of our uh, visitors. Yeah, and that makes a lot of sense because sometimes when they're the little ones, those toddlers, they are fast on their feet, aren't they? They're fast. <laughs> you can turn your head one moment to look at the construction <laughs> on the couture building right out the window and then you turn around and, you know, where are they? Well, we've got a gate for that reason. Yes, I love it all. And uh, as you pretty much specified, there's something there for kids from 1 to 92. So come on through and really just take it all in because not only are kids showing up there to have fun, they definitely learn while they're having fun. And this is this event in particular is a great way to make memories with the family. Absolutely. It's and as you said earlier, these are these are memories that um, otherwise young children might not get to form because it, mm -hmm. it is typically such an adult event. So <clears throat> and the the experience is very much um, educational. Um, it is also lots of fun, but it can be both of those things at the same time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we say that that um, play is the work of children. That's what they're supposed to do. And through play, that's how children help figure out who they are. That's how they explore the world around them. That's how they start to develop a sense of self. Uh, and that can happen in all sorts of environments. We just happen to have a really good one for that type of exploration. Yeah, like I said, when you think of fun and learning, Betty Brin Children's Museum definitely has it all figured out. So uh, you had mentioned a couple of your special exhibits a little earlier. And so I'd like to uh, talk a little bit more in detail about some of those. So you've got your um, I'm an Explorer exhibit. And so this is where kids really get a chance to use their imagination in every sense of the word because they can captain a submarine, explore new planets in outer space, the list goes on. Absolutely, yeah. A, a, a fun fact here is this exhibit <clears throat> was originally developed as the Adventures of Mr. Potato Head, an exhibit ah. that we um, we developed, and um, it's no longer um, named that way. Uh, but we brought it back to uh, the museum in a in a um, in a re themed, um, not re themed, but in a, in a you know a rebranded way. Um, and like you said, yeah, there's these four different modules where, you know, kids can go under the sea and they can go out into space and on safari and, you know, <clears throat> into uh, into the jungle and into the desert for archaeology. And um, it's just such a rich and immersive uh, experience for for kids. And um, we love having it on the floor and um, it'll be on the floor for just a little while longer before um, it's probably gone for good at that point. Aha. Uh -huh. So it's one of those things that, you know, uh, it will be gone. Uh, if you saw it last time you were there, you better exactly just take advantage and have some fun, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Indeed. So uh, you also have what's called the Be a Maker space. And uh, that's where kids can make holiday greeting cards for their family members, maybe for grandma and grandpa, ship one off to... Uh, Aunt Sissy, uh, whoever, that's my aunt's name, but uh, whatever the case, they also are able to make some uh, snowflakes and decorate the museum. Absolutely. Yeah. And in addition to that, even um, noisemakers that will, that are part of the New Year's Eve at noon celebration, because we mm -hmm. got to make a lot of noise as the, the <laughs> New Year's Eve. 
Yeah, that's the bee maker space is really a, a jewel in our museum. Um, and we, we launched that in 2013 when a lot of people didn't even know what a maker space was. It was we were really cutting edge and um, have actually been involved on the educational front, helping other organizations launch maker spaces, not just the space itself, but the philosophy of the space and what happens in the space and how you let kids get in the driver's seat and do a lot of the work and see where their their imaginations take them and so <clears throat> um it's not just like you know art time here we, we there's a lot more thought that we put into it than that and it makes it a really special experience it really does and i love just how there's so much thought put into everything that you have to offer there at the children's museum specifically uh, with hometown you did talk a little bit about this but uh, there's a special collaboration where there are businesses and corporations that are right here in the Milwaukee area where they actually lend their expertise and uh, become a part of this exhibit. Talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we, we have um, Sendix uh, is, is the grocery store. It is one of the most popular uh, places in the museum where, where this the script gets flipped and um, <clears throat> they are definitely a partner um, with us and have been since 2007, I think. So wow. quite some time. Uh, the bank in hometown is Waterstone Bank. Um, and you know they've been a supporter of, of ours for years. We have a, an innovation uh, station, the Brady uh, Corporation is the, uh, the sponsor of. Um, <clears throat> and it, it's just a it's a it's a fun area where we get to create a little microcosm. Oh, and of course, there's Harley Davidson. We have our, mm -hmm. our hands on Harley experience there. <laughs> you ride the motorcycle and fix it up a little and put on the helmet and all that good stuff. So um, really just a, a, a fun place uh, to let kids go kind of wild. It's it's probably the single most popular area inside the museum. Yeah, and they're kind of imitating everyday life. Kids watch everything that their parents do from going to the grocery store to, you know, cashing a check, all of those things. So they get to take on those roles. So there will be somebody who's buying groceries and maybe somebody who's playing the cashier, right? The, absolutely. And and the really, really fun thing that happens, the, the, the truly meaningful thing is when the child's parent or caregiver becomes part of the play experience. And so the child grabs that person and says, no, I'm driving the bus. You sit back here <laughs> and you make like you're the passenger or, you know, you you do these parts, typically the parts the kids would normally do. The adults get stuck with. Um, and, and there's just tremendous engagement that comes between a child and an adult in that kind of setting, as well as between a child and an older sibling. And mm -hmm. it's a really rich opportunity there, too. Yeah, and something that uh, you take great pride in there at the Betty Brin Children's Museum is the fact that uh, you make fun available for everyone. So uh, if there's a family who may not be financially able to pay to bring the whole family to the museum, you do have special programs that are set up to help in scenarios like that, right? We, we do. It's something we take very seriously and have since our founding. Um, and in fact, it's part of our DNA to make sure that we inspire all children and that's in our mission statement the word all is in our mission statement um, quite intentionally so we really want to make sure that this experience is open to anyone and everyone who wants to come and have fun and learn yep and as we wrap up i just wanted to mention that you guys uh, recently did a pilot on sensory friendly sessions so uh, that's where children who are on the spectrum have the opportunity to come and enjoy the facility as well. So uh, definitely keeping with the mission of making it fun for all children. That's right. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. And uh, I know you're going to have plenty of fun seeing all the kiddos come through during the holiday break. So thanks again and happy holidays to you. You're very welcome. Happy holidays. Thank you. Brian King is the CEO of the Betty Brin Children's Museum. For more information on anything that we've discussed today, visit their website at bbcmkids.org or call 414-390-5437. That's going to do it for today's show. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a happy and prosperous new year.